All right, everyone. Um, C.S. Joseph did an episode about two hours long on the on the Tiger King and typing the different people. I wanted to do something similar to this, but I was a little bit lazy. He cares a lot more than I do. But since he's already done all the work, I'm just going to add my thoughts to it after watching his episode. Um, I respect his work and his typing in that sense. Uh, most of what I know, I learned from him. Uh, this show is interesting to me. Um, like my boyfriend, for instance, found it a lot more entertaining than I did. Uh, he grew up, in my opinion, in like an ivory tower. You know, both his parents were government workers, and he grew up not with a lot of drama around him. Uh, for me, this was just like going back home because I grew up a lot around a lot of white trash. So I had my immediate family who were Jehovah's Witnesses, and they were like the clean people of my family. And then everyone else that weren't Jehovah's Witnesses were like on drugs, alcohol, meth, and lots of other issues. And, my parents kept me away from them for the most part, and I always kind of stayed away from the white trash. However, my father was a roofing contractor, and I was always around contractors and construction workers. For the most part, these people usually are there because they have nowhere else to go. So they get into construction typically because they just got out of prison, they're on drugs, and different reasons for that. For that. And so seeing this show, this wasn't shocking to me at all. This was almost kind of like normal. And even C.S. Joseph mentioned with him growing up in, in Washington, it was pretty normal to him too. And to me, I just watched the show and you see, you see a bunch of SPs all around making all their own decisions on their own. They're on a lot of drugs and alcohol and other issues. And you're going to have a lot of drama and chaos because they're all interest-based, pragmatic and so they're not really looking for efficient systems they're just kind of doing things whatever comes in their mind they just do it you know because they're freedom-based artisans and and so to watch a zoo operate that way is no surprise to me and so i just wanted to talk about the different typings and different things about like the gay culture for instance and it, i don't want to be too long-winded but unfortunately i'm an antp so i probably will be anyways let's just think first things first um joe exotic is obvious in esfp you know clear cut and through stereotype depraved esfp the type of person you know that has like themselves as some kind of star infinite charisma because they have this aspirations to be this amazing person you know you go right up the bat listen to the interview he starts listening about everything he does all of his status all of his uh, responsibilities blah 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 he's listening listening t e t e t e t e then he's always essie, 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 essie. Look at this person doing Carol Baskin's doing this. I want to label her a bitch. You know, Carol Baskin's this. Uh, ESFP clear through and through. Uh, you know, a depraved one. So don't suck there and judge other ESFPs and say Joe Exotic's the example of them. You know, obviously he's not. He's got some serious issues. Uh, you saw the issues with him and his romantic relationships with his two husbands in there um, who are also both SPs. Um, you have, uh, what's his name? John Finley is the guy with no teeth. Uh, yeah, he's an ISFP and, the and the, the guy that killed himself, um, uh, I think Travis. Yeah. Travis, he's an ESTP. Both these guys were straight. Okay. But they were in a gay relationship with Joe Exotic. Um, if you're if you're a, a prude person, you can't handle sexual talk, especially gay sexual talk. Uh, you probably should turn it off right now. Anyways, SPs for the most part, when they're gay, they're gonna be tops only for the most part. That means they like to dominate, they like to penetrate, and things like that. Uh, SI typically receives in the gay community, and uh, that means they're usually getting the bottoms. Not always, but usually that's the natural way to go with it. Um, uh, abstract types, everyone I've met has been completely versatile. However, when it comes to the concrete types, the SPs, top only, SJs, bottom only. However, some SJs might claim to be versatile, but they are natural bottoms. Some SPs might claim to be versatile, but they're natural tops. And when I meet somebody that only does one, you know, I know they're going to be an SP, they're going to be an SJ. Get that out of the way. Not only are they SPs, which means they're gonna, if they were gay, they would probably be top only, but instead they're literally the wives of Joe Exotic, who is their dominant man. And they're SPs who are freedom-based artisans who also want to be dominant, but they're being submissive to Joe Exotic for drugs, alcohol, and security, essentially. Um, and so having that one dude kill himself, you know, is not, I mean, it's debatable whether he did or not. The, the guy in the show says he didn't kill himself, but 
both of them would feel trapped in a relationship where they would be stuck and essentially being raped over and over again for drugs and alcohol, which does happen. Um, and in the gay culture, you can see a lot of this, of a lot of the, the, the promiscuity you see in the, in the gay culture, typically speaking, it's because those are club hoppers. And who likes to go to the clubs the most? SE users, because it's a group dynamic, a group experience of dancing, of singing, you know, going out for drinks and being with the bros. Okay, straight guys obviously do that too, but they're usually looking for women. So if you go to a gay club, the majority of the people there are going to be SC users and they're going to be hooking up one another, you know, alternating things like that. And they can never can go anywhere because none of them are loyal to each other because none of them are SI users. Um, I don't like going to gay clubs. Um, I don't even like going to saunas or anything like that. That kind of stuff is weird to me. And, uh, but definitely you find, you know, the SPs definitely linger toward those areas and go to those places. Um, and so you'll see a lot of this stuff and you see a lot of people, you know, on drugs and alcohol are having really destructive relationships with each other because they're doing SP, 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 you know, they're not really getting anywhere. It wasn't until uh, Joe Exotic's third time where his, his husband currently now, let me know, Dylan, who's an ISFJ, that would be his golden pair, ISFJ, ESFP together. And you see, even the ISFJ, Dylan is still loyal to him, even though he's in prison. And I don't think he has any money. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic in that sense. And so when you think about gay relationships, if you see about people getting married who are gay, for instance, um, you're going to see more SISE -S 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 -E relationships. You know, the SPs are going to be with the SJs. You know, I'm currently with ENTJ. I'm an ENTP, you know, so you have the SISE. You know, and that's just how it's going to naturally fit. And so when you think about socionics and the duality thing, that gets thrown out the window when it comes to successful gay relationships. Um, at first sight, you might see Joe Exotic saying, oh my God, I really like that guy because his hands or his face and his looks. And so SE users typically are really drawn to looks right away. And so they might uh, re reject the SI users at first until realize there's something there that they want that's more than just sex and more than just looks. And you see that later on in life. Um, and so when they start dating around 40s, you know, things like that, typically speaking, they get out of the club scene, they get out of that, and they're like, okay, now I want to find love, and so in this case, and they're gonna be like, oh, okay, who are these SJs? Okay, who are these uh, EMPs or IMPs? You know, and so then they're looking at those kind of things, oh, these guys are gonna be loyal to me, oh, they're not going to cheat on me, oh, they're not going to be at a club with a different guy every night, oh, uh, yeah, this is great, you know, and so they find that quality of that sense. And so that's kind of how that is. And so it's kind of sad when you think about it, um, seeing an ISFP and ESTP doing that kind of stuff, essentially for meth, uh, which, which people whore themselves out for drugs all the time, you know, and there's no exception here. And, uh, and the funny thing about it was, now I was switching away from Joe Exotic and his husband's boyfriends or whatever, um, you look about the other people on the zoo. You have the manager, uh, what was his name? John Ranky, also another ISFP. You had that one idiot, Jeff Logue, and on their ISTP. Uh, his wife was an ESTJ, they're golden pairs. And um, uh, what was that one dude? Uh, yeah, and so you essentially have a, a, a zoo in the middle of Oklahoma with all SPs there, and that one uh, trans uh, uh, gentleman, um, Kelsey, uh, the, the, the documentary didn't say that he identifies as a man. Um, they did call her, her over and over again, and which is interesting for Netflix because they're usually pretty progressive and they completely just disrespected him for that, um, but ESFP as well. And so you have all these SPs on this zoo. You know, you got drugs, you got alcohol, you got desperation, you got money involved. You just know it's going to be a real fucked up situation. So watching this was no surprising. Anybody who understands typology can look at this and say, oh, this, this is just a shitstorm ready to happen. You know, a powder cake. And that's exactly what it did. Even when Jeff Lowe, you know, one of the more intelligent people of the, of the operation came in as an ISTP, you know, with FE and Fury, he was trying to help some people, you know, being that, that, that FE user in the whole situation. But eventually he's just like, well, you guys are stupid. And so now I'm not even gonna help you at all. And so he literally just took the zoo essentially, you know? And so that makes sense. Cause you, when you've got that many pragmatic, that many interest based people all in one spot, 
you know, doing what they want, you're also going to attract the attention of the NFs. Okay. And so this is where Carol Baskin comes in. And so some people would say, how could she be an ENF? She's evil. Okay. NFs can be evil all the time. You know, many people claim Hitler's an INFJ. I don't buy it. I think Hitler is in, a, in the Crusader Quadra. Um, I'm not going to type him exactly, but I'm going with that route. But many people say INFJ for Hitler. Carol Baskins is a depraved ENFJ, and she's also probably a sociopath. Um, when she first came on in the first episode and they started interviewing her, I immediately got high self-righteous Effie. And with her interview, she seemed responding. Okay, so I originally thought INFJ, ISFJ, but I couldn't really get a, a clear-cut answer with her because she's so fake. She reminded me of Hillary Clinton, even though Hillary Clinton's an INTJ. But just that fake politi political thing. And um, she's an ENFJ. You watch some other interviews with her outside of the show. She's initiating. She, she's definitely an FE user by far. Uh, you watched the episode of C.S. Joseph talking about the, the vice and virtue of the ENFJ. You have um, benevolence or cruelty. And ENFJs, when they're evil or mad or angry at you, they can be very cruel. And because, remember the types, the nicest types can be the most mean when pissed off, by far. Because they know all the right buttons to push to destroy you emotionally. And so with her, you know, as an NF, she's going to be triple interest, double affiliative. And what do they do when they see pragmatics? Do they want to get you, make you to heal? They want to make you submit to their authoritative mindset, which is affiliative. And so you see her tricking Joe Exotic, baiting him in to do something stupid, which she knew she could manipulate him to doing it. And then he could keep going because he doesn't understand how the affiliative works, but she does. And so then a lawsuit comes in, ruins him, takes a you know, million dollars, making him do stupid stuff with a copyright on a photo. And you see that. Um, do I think she murdered her husband? Freedom of speech, like they say. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't have a lot of evidence, but no, I, I think she did, most definitely. Chase says that her husband was an ESTJ, maybe. Um, I don't really think of ESTJs as womanizers, but I can't mistype someone just have stereotypes sure ESTJs can be romanizers too I mean look at Joe Biden uh and uh you know and lots of other politicians always caught in those kind of things and so yeah he's an ESTJ by the way Joe Biden and um and so you see the affiliative and now with her new husband who's an INFP they're golden pairs and you see them ENFJs are really in the dominatrix and things like that INFPs love being slaves to the ENFJ and you know and SI child's all about, okay, dominate me. I'm, I'm scared at first, but now I trust you. Now you can do what you want. See when a caller, they get married, dominatrix, ENFJ, whipping him, and all this other stuff. You can just imagine what's going on in the bedroom. Um, you know, NFs tend to be into kink, and that's one thing people don't understand. Uh, <laughs> and nothing wrong with that. I don't care. ENTPs are pretty vanilla, in all honesty. Uh, uh, I'm we're systematic in bed. We just want to get it done and over with and, you know, and uh, get other things going on, you know? And so with that, and so you have the ENFJ that uses the affiliative to crush Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic gets tricked into them, even though he got warning from other people who are obviously more experienced, say, hey, don't go after Carol Baskin. She's going to destroy you. And she did. Now he's in prison for 20 years. Uh, you see these dynamics here, and she would say that in the affiliative nature of an NF, or even an SJ for this matter, you know, would come in here and use the law, use the thing, and uh, which is actually kind of funny though, because then you have total ESFP demon uh, who's been trapped in a cage, as Joe Exotic says, I'm in, I'm, I'm in a cage. Now that he lost all freedom, because that's the most important thing to an ESFP is freedom of choice, and freedom to be able to do what they want to do that gets taken away, you throw them in prison, their demon mode is take away everyone else's freedom, any demon. No one else has the right to choose. And so now he's getting involved with PETA and he's striking back and just exposing all the skeletons in the closet of everybody's you know, stuff with abusive animals or whatever. And not that I'm gonna support PETA, so PETA's a cult. Um, I mean, anybody wanna argue with that, they are this cult. Um, I used to be pretty involved with them one of my vegan days, but... Um, Anyways, they're getting them involved to squash the rest of the tiger stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just interesting to talk about this kind of stuff. Um, 
One little shocker for me was uh, Doc Antle. Uh, Chase has him typed as an INTJ. From just watching the documentary, I assumed he was another ESFP because I definitely got that quadra of F I S E T E um, and I and movement from him. And ESFPs and INTJs can be alike in a lot of ways if, if, if Antle thinks that he needs to perform for a certain thing. And so he was on TV. But I can, I can see where Chase is going with this on calling him an INTJ because uh, in his personal life and through interviews outside of the documentary, he's definitely a lot more responding. He's a lot more introverted. And it is kind of an NTG, NTJ thing when they can't live with somebody who messes with their stuff because their SI is so low, they need all their SE tokens everywhere so they can remember everything. Otherwise, they're completely lost. And so you, if you're with an NTJ or even an NFJ for that matter, they have to have their physical totems all around their house and things can't be moved around and it really, really pisses them off. And so this makes sense why his wives are in separate houses because they probably were fidgeting around the stuff and his, uh, his wives seem to be SJs um, from what I saw. Uh, but interesting, he was really upset about the reputation that the documentary said. Apparently, a lot of those women that people were accusing him of having sex with on his, his um, tiger farm in Myrtle Beach or actually his nieces and his daughters. And uh, that's kind of sick if that's what they were implying in the documentary, which I think they were, in all honesty. But yeah, and so it's just, I'm looking here at other names and uh, I think that covers everything. Uh, yeah, you watch shows like uh, The Tiger King and you've got SP Heavy Central. Everyone on that whole farm is a freaking SP besides the wives that show up here and there, maybe a couple secretaries. You know, and you had a weird relationship, you know, which was very depraved. That's not the way mature gay couples are. Uh, that's that's essentially the club, the drug scene, the, I don't know, just like that that whole depraved uh, scene in, in the gay culture. It's in straight culture, too, so don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, there are cities like Berlin and Las Vegas. They're there for, for a reason, you know, and... Uh, and I'm not judging, whatever, but that's not typical. That's not standard of most gay people, you know, and Joe Exotic is not an example for the gay community in case there are some people that may think that. I think we're past that and we're more, you know, beyond that as a, as a civilization on earth for this, for the most part. Uh, and so, yeah, SP is all in a zoo, Oklahoma, lots of drugs, you know, lots of money. It's a powder keg, ready to explode. Lots of drama is going to happen there because there's nobody there to keep things under control. And you can see this throughout history. Whenever you saw a lot of men in one area, men are typically SPs. Without women to keep them balanced, women are typically SJs. SJs keep SPs balanced in a way, and SPs keep SJs more freeing and make them learn, teach them how to have fun, how to laugh more. And so that's why they're, you know, in unison with each other in that sense. And that's just what's going to happen. And so those are my thoughts on uh, the C.S. Joseph typing. It'll be in the description, um, and I'll probably put the, the types down there too.